us a direction. You, you know, and, and, you know, us being men sometimes, you know, I'm traveling with Pastor Teresa, and she said, well, look at a map, or, you know, you don't know where you're going, you know, you need directions, and I always say, I know where I'm going, you know, because I'm a man. Men don't get lost, we just discover new places we ain't been. All right. <laughs> All right. But through this journey, because we're on a journey and, and God is taking us to different places and he's teaching us how to be synchronized and he's teaching us how to be on one accord. He's teaching us how to be, let us know that we're part of the body of believers. We're part of the church itself. That we all, He's teaching us that we need to be in sync with him. And he also he's teaching us how to go in and how to go out. But he, on the midst of a journey, if you're like me, I pick out different signposts and different um, objects and different streets. I remember certain things about where I'm going because I need to get back. And so as we go through this journey, as God's taken us through this journey, now this is not just a journey and these are not just messages concerning synchronization. These are not just messages concerning being one. These are not just messages concerning the sound of God. But God is so desire of us to take us on a journey. And that journey that he's taken us to is a place where he can begin to exemplify himself. He can begin to magnify himself. That journey that he's taken us on is a place that he's causing us all to go together. And as we all begin to go together, God has given us directions. God is placing different things in our lives. He's deposited certain things as we're on this journey. But the main thing God is calling for is for us not only to be in sync, but he's calling for oneness. He's calling for oneness in everything we do. It's about oneness in everything we do. Because when there's oneness, there's no me, there's no I, there's no my. It's about him. And so Pastor Ed was ministering last week and he was talking about our worship and how your, your worship. That's what we were just experiencing. Our worship. Our worship is not some emotional high that we, 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 we can just experience in church. And once we get outside of church, we don't remember what we did in church. But when you truly begin to worship God as one, being one in worship, God reminds you. Remember, we talk about directions, right? We're talking about picking out signposts so you can get back because God knows that what you experience inside of him when you begin to worship him, when you begin to magnify him, when you begin to honor him. He knows that once you leave this place, there are some things that are placed in your life to distract you or to detour you. But God wants you to remember one thing. I placed signposts in your life so when that certain signpost come to make you angry in the midst of your worship you can't get angry when that when that one when that one person or that roadblock get to and you don't know what to do that's the best time to worship when you don't know what to do because you begin to say god i just lift my hands to you and that's why you look in the book of psalms 103 and david says bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me and so bless his holy name. And so David realized that it is through his worship that when he begins to bless God, he begins to take his mind off of his situations, off of the things that tries to disturb him and discourage him. He said, when I begin to enter to a place of worship with God, I know that he's fixing my situation in the midst of my worship. And that's why I said earlier, there's hundreds of us on the inside of this building. But each one of us, when we begin to individually worship God, God can individually download what we need on the inside of us. Because we're giving place to the spirit of God to move and to do what he wants to do on the inside. And so I want to take you on a journey. Y'all don't mind going on a journey with me this morning, do you? All right. It won't be long. But this journey will be... Uh, as Pastor Ed says sometime, one of these quiet sessions. That's the kind of journey I want to take you on. I want to take you into the life of a lady that had an encounter with Jesus. I want to take you on a journey to let you know that no matter where you are and who you are, that God cares about you enough to detour just to come to you. God, God doesn't care about what your nationality. He don't care if you was what church you was raised in. He, 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 because I was raised in me, you know. 
but he don't he don't care about any of those things. But all he's concerned about, if you begin to come before God and say, God, I really want to to worship you. I want to get into a place of worship. God will send somebody by to show you how to worship, you know, because. When we try, when we talk about worshiping, we, we come up here and we, we try to exalt you into praising God. We say, you know, you need to lift your hands and praise God. Well, guess what? My visible outside structure can't get you to praise God. Amen. But if you can tap into, or if I can tap into that inner being on the inside of you, if I can tap into the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you, that's when I can truly begin to worship because I've taken my eyes off of you, the physical. And I place my eyes on you, the spiritual. Yes. And it's through the spirit that he begins to give utterance. But so if you have your Bibles, turn your Bibles to John chapter four. John chapter four. And so when we talk about being one in worship, when we talk about worship, worship is an identifier is to place to give adoration, to give reverence to, to give homage to. When we begin to think about worshiping God, we just don't think about coming to God and just begin to just say, hallelujah, God, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We just begin to say words. But worship is when I begin to say what's on the inside of me. What's on the inside of me begins to come out of me. That's true worship. And that's the worship that God is looking for. And so that's what he's telling us now. I want you to be in sync with me. But guess what? In order to be in sync with me, I need you to understand. I, know, I want you to know how to worship me. Because in the midst of me worshiping him, that's where my fulfillment comes. My fulfillment doesn't come when I think I'm praising God. It doesn't come when I think I'm worshiping God. It doesn't come when others try to motivate me to praise God. But my true fulfillment comes when I truly begin to understand and the spirit that's on the inside of me begins to come outside of me. That's true worship. Some of us need to break the containers that we're in right now. Need to break them. Because you have to understand your, your, your body itself cannot hold the very presence and the spirit of God when worship breaks out on the inside of you. I was one of the most cold-hearted, worship, anti-worship people that I ever met. As Pastor Ed was saying last week, I was one of them people. I used to look at people and say, come on now, don't take all that. We've been singing 10 minutes and my feet hurt. You know, this, this is ridiculous. You know, you got to do all that to reach God. He's supposed to be God. He's supposed to meet your needs. You ain't, you ain't, come on now. You know, and, and guys, I know it's football season. You know, don't say, when pastor going to finish? Well, we're talking about worship. Amen. And, and, and so I used to say to myself, it don't take all that to, to do that. These people just emotional. They just having an emotional experience because guess what? I can look at their lives. Worship alters your life, believe it or not. Now, remember I say when you begin to worship God that you, you can't contain him and you begin to express yourself in dance. You begin to express yourself in praise, express yourself in songs. You begin to express yourself in a shout. You know, that's true worship. You, you know, think about this. Have you ever put a pitcher of water or a glass of water in the refrigerator, in a freezer? And you left it there to get, be cold and you forgot about it. And when you came back, the container itself was broken. It was cracked. It's still water, but because it has taken another form. When you begin to worship, you begin to take on another form. And, and so the restrictions of this body, the restrictions of your emotions, the restrictions of what you've been taught, the restrictions of, of how you used to be in this denomination and, and that denomination, those restrictions now begin to come off and, and, and the spirit of worship, can your sense of being cannot contain it. And when, because it cannot contain it, God begins to develop cracks on your foundation. And guess what? Once... That has happened to a container. You cannot put that container back together again. 
And it's simply because you have now taken on a new form. And that's a form of true worship when I worship God. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? So let, let, me, let, me take you on, let me take you on that journey. Let me take you on this journey. You in John chapter 4? Now, look at verse number 20. We're going to focus on verses 20 and 24. And so let me bring you up to that point. So in John chapter 4, it starts off with, and I think it's like verse number 8. Sorry, verse number 10. Jesus says to his disciples, he says, I must go through Samaria. Now, understand this. The Jews did not journey in the land of Samaria. They didn't go there. There was a road that went to Samaria, but there was a road that went around the outskirts of Samaria. Because what happened is the Jews believed that the Samarians were an alien people, which means that they were half breed. They had mixed with 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 some Jews. And they had mixed with other nations, uh, the Azarian nation. They had mixed with with Syria. So they had, there was a mixture of people. But because they felt that they were not true people. They went on the outskirts because they felt if they went inside, it would contaminate them. You know, sometimes we sit next to somebody and we say, man, why well, I got to sit next to this person? They hinder in my praise. They, they, maybe God put them there to provoke your praise. Maybe God put them there to provoke your worship. And, and, and so we can't, we can't look at it as a negative, but we look at it as a positive. Well, once again, there must be something on the inside of me that they, that they need because they sat next to me. Because I know once we start worshiping, there's going to be some shaking in here. There's going to be some breaking on the inside of here. And so what happens is Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. But you got to remember, they don't have any dealings with Samarians. Some of us don't have any dealings with people right next to us. We, we, we feel they contaminate. They're going to contaminate me. You know, we don't, we don't have dealings with them because they don't dress like me. They ain't, they ain't fashionable like me. You, you know, they don't, they don't wear what I wear and their makeup is not like me and their shoes are not like my shoes. And, you, 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 you know, we, they, just, they just ain't like me. And, and, and so Jesus, by the Spirit of God, says to his disciples, says to him within himself, I must go through Samaria. And so as he went through Samaria, he gets to a place and he meets the lady at the well. Y'all remember the story of the lady at the well. It's been preached so many times, but I want to preach it to you a different way this time. And so he gets to this place where he meets the lady at the well and he sends his disciples, you know, to go get food. And so as they're going, only Jesus remained. And, you know, sometime when you get to a place of worship, you really don't need to be with somebody else. You just, you just really need to be alone with God. God, I'm just alone with you because I want to begin to, to worship you. God, this is just, just me and you here, and, and you know all my inadequacies, and, and God, but I want to begin to just worship. I just, God, I just want to begin to, to, to reach heaven and be in contact with you. And so there was only Jesus and this woman at the well, and, and so Jesus asked her, Give me something to drink. And she, her first response was, you know, you Jews don't have no dealings with us Samaritans. Why are you talking to me? Y'all don't talk to us because you think you're better than me. So why, 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 are, you, why, are, you, why are you talking to me? Because I know you're just going to insult me. You're just going to say something bad about me. You're just going to tell me I'm, I'm not really human. But she says to him, how are you going to get something to drink and have nothing to draw with? How? How, how? how are you going to get something to drink? You have, you have nothing to draw the water out with, you, you, you know. And, but Jesus replied to her, well, if you had asked me for a drink, I would now have given you this living water. This living water is a water that gets you into a place of worship. This living water gets you into the place of revelation and understanding. And so Jesus was saying, I want to give you this living water. You know, and he begins to tell her all about her life and, and all of these things. And, you, you know, and she began to say, oh, look at verse number 20. You know, in verse 19, he said, oh, I, I perceive that you are a prophet. You know, when he begins to say to her, you know, um, go get your husband. He said, I don't have a husband. He said, well, 
Uh, you answer right. And the husband you now have is not yours. And so in the midst of being entering into a place of worship, God now begins to strip off the things that's been keeping you back from worship. So he has to identify with her the things that can hinder her worship and that would not allow her to worship. And so he begins to reveal that to her and she perceives that he is a prophet, the man of God, and then she changed the subject. Then she wants to get spiritual deep. Y'all know how we get. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. He is God of gods, King of kings, Lord of lords. He is the most high God. I worship him in the sanctuary. I worship him in my bedroom. But that's really not you. And, and, and so he, she says to him, okay, let's change the subject because I know you just saw my past. I know you just told me everything about my past. So I can't fool you with that. But he says, let's change it to worship. I want to show you how religious I am. And so in verse 20, she says, our fathers worship in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, woman, believeth me that the hour cometh. Somebody say the hour cometh. The hour cometh. And when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the father. He says, ye worship. You know not what you know, what you worship. We worship for salvation is of the Jews. Now, this is what the message Bible says. Verse number 22, it says, you worship guessing in dark. You don't know what you're doing. You, you think you're worshiping God. You think you're trying to get into a place. But in the sense, in the spirit, you're just walking in the dark, bumping into stuff. You, you're in, when you're in darkness, you have no direction. You don't know where you're going. You don't know if you, the place that you started, if you're back there now because you're trying to feel your way. And sometimes we try to feel our way in church, feel our way into worship. Worship is not a feeling. You, 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 you really can't feel your way into worship because when you try to feel your way into worship, you go off what others have taught you. And there are some things that we try to teach you. You can't be taught. You must begin to capture it. And so once you capture something, that means you've taken hold of it. And so go back to it. says you worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in clear day of light, clear light of day, which means that we have an understanding of what we worship. I have an understanding of who God is. I have an understanding of what God can do. I have an understanding of he is Jehovah. I have an understanding that he is the almighty. I have an understanding that he can't make a way out of no way. I have an understanding that I can speak to a mountain. I can speak to a situation and it shall be removed. He says, I have a clear understanding of who I am. But when you worship in the dark. You really can't worship God. Well, well, pastor, he says, he says, God's ways of salvation is made available through the Jews. And so what are you saying, pastor? Well, I want you to understand this. When we get what God is trying to do, he's trying to get us collectively, each and every one of us. Remember we talked about the